In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to um, work in 2D mode um, and uh, how to do some of the basics, um, right? Sort of integrating some of the same things. And yeah, this is Bob Ross rolling around. Um, clearly, he has a, <laughs> uh, a circle collider, right? But we're just going to look at some of the basics. And really, the, the point of this is, you know, getting the initial um, uh, things set up so that you can work in 2D and use the universal render pipeline um, and then the interaction is going to be done using Bolt. Okay, so Okay, so because creating a new file on my computer in Unity right now is kind of a nightmare, um, because there's this default window layout bug that is driving me insane, and I'm not quite sure how to how to resolve it. Um, but since that's an issue, um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new scene in this file, um, and then go through kind of the same steps. But if you're starting from Unity Hub, um, before we get into that, what you would want to do is, um, right, go ahead and click on create a new project, um, name it, save it, and select the universal render pipeline as your, um, as the template that you would want to use. And this just starts to set up the universal render pipeline, but there are a few steps we're going to need to go through to get 2D to function, 2D materials to function with the universal render pipeline. So go ahead, you'd hit create and it would go through. Mine will crash if I try and do that. So instead, um, I'm just going to be in here and I'm going to go ahead and go um, file and new scene. You should create a new scene as well um, because, right, the universal render pipeline prefab is what's going to be there. And so I'm going to select the basic built in and it's, I'm going to set it, start it in 3D. Um, we could talk about the empty as well, which is like truly empty. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit create. Okay, so I've got this new scene. I'm going to save this as 2D. Um, scene. Um, maybe we'll just call this a template, right? It's basically we're going to be setting up the initial steps, and this is something that you could reuse um, for other, you know, as you create more scenes. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in my scenes folder and hit save. Okay, so I've got the scene set up, but I'm in 3D mode, and so how um, do I, or sorry, you, your, pro, your view probably looks like this. I'm in 3D mode. So first, um, we're going to need to go ahead and switch to 2D mode and, um, you know, look at a couple other things. But what I'd like you to do is to create a cube really quickly. Um, and just, you know, let that drop wherever it is in the beginning, in the center of the scene, and then switch to 2D mode. And, oops, not to the game, switch to 2D mode. And there we go, right? So I've flipped to 2D mode. You can see that I still have my cube in here, um, but there's a couple changes um, I'm going to make to my scene first, and then we're, there's a couple other changes we need to make in order to, to get this to render correctly. So uh, first, I'm going to select my camera. And right now, my camera is in perspective mode. Now, this cube that I've created is, you know, pretty much dead even with where it, where it should be. So if I um, go ahead and let's, I'm actually going to pop into 3D mode again. And I'm going to try and move this so I can see it in the view of my camera. And for some reason it, right, popped out behind there. Okay, so now I can see my cube. So now if I go back into 2D mode, right, in my little window here, you can see this as well. Um, if I select my cube and um, in 2D mode, I want you to note that I'm not, by default, I don't use the, the move tool. Um, I use this other tool called the Rect tool, right? Because essentially everything is two-dimensional rather than three-dimensional. And this will allow me to scale things in, right, just the X and Y direction and change the position in just the X and Y position direction, right, without changing Z. Um, but so I'm just going to go ahead and drag this up. And it looks like it's already set it in orthographic mode. But just in case, um, if I click on my main camera, here we go right, my scene view is orthographic, right, which means there's no perspective. It's, 
exactly flat down. Um, but if I click on my camera or I pop over to the game scene, you'll see that I'm actually seeing the shadow on the bottom side of this cube. And that's not necessarily what I'm going to want if I'm do, working with 2D assets. And so what I need to do is I need to come, I need to select my camera, I need to come over here to the type of projection, and I need to change that to orthographic. Right? And as soon as I change it to orthographic, you'll see that it flattens everything out. Now, you may be creating um, an experience or a game where you actually want it to be in 2D mode, right, in terms of camera placement, but you actually want that perspective. So it's up to you, but for pretty much everything you're going to be doing if you're using flat assets, this is the way you want to work. And there's a couple other changes we need to make. Now, typically, we don't necessarily want a skybox um, in our background when we're working in 2D mode. And so I'm going to go ahead and go up to Window and then go down to Rendering and Lighting. And that's going to bring up the lighting pane, which is going to allow me to make some adjustments. So if I click on the Environment tag, um, right now there's a skybox material that says Default Skybox. I'm going to go ahead and select the dot next to that, I'm going to just drag all the way up and click None. Um, and as soon as I do that, I get this solid back blue background. And this is in the game window, and if I click to the scene window, my scene window is actually gray because there's nothing there. And blue is just sort of the default background color um, when you're uh, working with um, with Unity. And so the other thing here is on, still on my camera, there is this background type called Skybox. Um, I can go ahead and change that to solid color, and then I can choose a color. And you can see that this is that color, right? So now if I was to go in here and say, oh, I really want to make my eyes bleed every time I open this, right? I can crank this up into some, you know, horrible magenta um, and, you know, make my brain wish that I was a different human. So instead, let's, uh, I'm going to, you know, go back to some sort of blue. It doesn't matter what, I find the darker blue to be a little bit harder to see certain things off of. Um, but that's, you know, that's me. It's up to you. Um, I might, like somewhere in here is about where it was at. It's probably a little more purple right now. It's probably closer to true blue, but whatever, whatever works for you. Okay because eventually we will have an asset in there that's going to cover up the entire background anyway. Okay, so we've got our camera set up correctly. So now we need to make sure that we can make use of URP materials and have everything work seamlessly. And so there's a couple assets we're going to need to create in order to do that. Um, because what we're going to want to be able to do is have this be 2D. Now you'll see down here I've got um, these render assets already um, created. and but So I'm going to go ahead and um, do this a second time and add them where they need to be added. right? And they may already be populated in those fields. Um, if, you know, you may have a really strange color here if these things aren't done yet. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to go to create and I'm doing this in the assets folder. And I'm going to go to Rendering, Universal Pipeline. And the first thing I want to create is a pipeline asset. And I'm just going to call this uh, 2D Pipeline is what I'll call this one. Um, just so I right, know what I'm doing here. There's actually this one is right, 2D Pipeline Renderer. This one's just going to be the 2D Pipeline. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and right click again and create a go to universal render pipeline, pipeline asset, and then go down to 2D renderer. And it says it's experimental here, but it seems to be working OK at this point. So I'm going to select that and um, I'm going to call this uh, it'll be a 2D renderer, but um, oh, renderer data one. Great. OK. So then what I need to do is, you know, first, if I select this option, this new renderer that I created, um, the default material is lit. Um, and, you know, we're going to probably change that in a second, but we're, we'll leave it there for now. Um, this post-processing data, we're not going to worry about that. Everything else is um, going to be set 
basically the same, right? We just need these assets to make this work. So then what I need to do is I need to go to my 2D pipeline that I created and I need to go ahead and set this. ID. Right now there may not be an option in here, but I need to set this to the, um, to the correct um, render. So if I click on 2D renderer data one, Right, so that's the one that I want. That's the asset that I want to use in there. Again, I'm gonna leave everything else the same for now. There's a lot that we could get into in here, um, but you know, URP is called a scriptable render pipeline. Um, basically, these settings allow you to, you know, you can adjust a whole bunch of stuff in here, um, but we're gonna leave it all alone right now. Okay, so I've got those set and then there's one final place I need to make a change. So I need to go up to File, um, and I need to go down to, um, where is it? So I need to go to Edit, and I need to go to Project Settings. And in Project Settings, I need to select the Graphics tab. And then I need to choose, right now it's the Universal Render Pipeline asset. This is where I will need to say, um, I want the 2D Pipeline to be the, um, the, what I'm using as in order to work with my graphics. Now, once I've made those changes, um, I should be able to apply universal render URP materials um, and work with all the shaders and things that are in here. Okay, so those are the basic steps to get this set up. Okay, so now we need to start to add some assets to our scene and talk about some of the differences between working in 3D and working in 2D. So the first major difference is that, granted, you can use 3D objects um, in your scene. And actually, I'm going to switch to my scene view here. Um, you can use 3D objects in your scene. Uh, however, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and just use 2D objects for now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. Oh, I'm going to right click. I'm going to delete that. There we go. So at this point, I'm going to go up and I'm going to try and create a 2D object but the 2D objects menu is not here. Now, in previous versions of Unity, it's in there by default, um, but because I opened this, I created this from a 3D template, um, they are not loading those things automatically. And so what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to go to the package manager, and I am going to need to wait for a hot second. Okay. And I want to go to the Unity registry. And the package that I need to install is this 2D sprite package. You'll notice that there's actually several options in here, right? There's 2D animation, 2D pixel perfect, 2D PSD importer, etc., sprite shape. All of these have different um, functions and add essentially add additional functionality to Unity for working with 2D stuff. We're not going to cover most um, any of them right now, but we are going to select 2D Sprite and install it. So if you have an older version of Unity, you may not have needed to do this step. Okay, so I've installed that, so let's go see. Okay, perfect. So now I have the ability to do sprites um, and sprite masks and some other things. So fantastic. Okay, so, um, so how do we get assets into this 2D world. So let's go ahead and create a 2D object. We're going to go to Sprite, and we'll start with a circle, right? Which, oh, or maybe I'll click on a square and we'll start with a square, right? So Unity has several just default blank um, sprites that we can load. And we have a few options here, right? So we have our transform, and you'll note that we still have a three-dimensional uh, three vector for position, rotation, and scale. Um, and, but right, right now, my position is really just being changed in the X and Y. And you'll see that I can right, um, adjust the color of this sprite. So I'm just dealing with you know, whatever color this thing is. Right? And the draw mode is simple. And you know, we're not going to worry about any of these masks or anything here yet but we're gonna get started here, right? So I've got this square and you'll see that, right, I can scale it, oops, if I actually select, right, I can scale it to whatever size. You know, this is a, a decent stand-in, um, you know, for like a 
for a simple game, but I want to show you how to uh, actually take an asset and make it into um, an ob a 2D object that you can use, a sprite. So um, let's start with Bob Ross. So I'm going to have these in the tutorial um, folder, or you can just search for images on your hard drive. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and select Bob down here. And you'll see that there's arrows here, and there's a reason for that. And actually, why don't I go ahead and I'm going to import something else um, because I've already changed this, which is why that arrow exists. So I want let's go ahead and just do a new some new asset. And again, you can look for images anywhere on your computer. I'm going to try and find a PNG. You know what? I know I have a picture of banana on here somewhere, so let's find a banana. There we go. I've got some JPEGs of bananas. Fantastic. We'll use this as a tile or something, right? Um, so I'm going to select this JPEG. I'm going to click Import. Now, when I do that, um, I don't know. Oh, the image looks really tiny here, so it's hard to see, right? But I've got this banana. And if I select this banana, you'll see that currently my texture type is default. If I try and drag this into the scene, right, it's not going to happen, right? And if I try and pull it into the hierarchy, again, nothing happens. So what I need to do is I need to select it, and then I need to change the texture type. Right now it's set to default, which is what you would use, right, to apply to a material. But we're actually going to be using this as an object in our scene. And so I'm going to change this from default and go down to sprite. Right, and so this is useful. It even tells you it's for 2D and UI applications. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm not going to change any other setting on this at all. I'm just going to hit apply. And now that I've got this banana, I can pull this out into my scene. And you'll see that I get a banana um, object here. And note that even though I pulled this up for my assets, it's currently not a prefab. Right, so that's one change um, that that happens in in two D is that you know because it's you know rather than having a, like a convoluted step there, right? It's easier just to grab your at flat assets and, and pull them up into the scene, right? So we have this beautiful banana in our scene now, um, and so let's go ahead and look at things that we can do with this. Now, first, as I said, we can scale it, so I'm going to scale it down a bit because it's huge. Uh, and then the other thing is, right? I have a couple components on here by default. I have my transform and I have my sprite renderer. Now, one of the things that, um, right, if I want to flip this around, there's a couple controls here that allow me to make um, simple changes. We're not going to worry about tiling this or slicing this right now. We're just going to leave draw mode to simple. Um, there's no mask, right, interaction at this point. We don't have a mask. Um, and the sprite sort point, should it be the center or the pivot? We're going to leave it at the center for now. And then we don't have, we just have this sprite's default material applied to it. And we're not going to look at materials yet for sprites. Um, but we still can, uh, right, we could uh, falsely, cut, wait, we could essentially tint this with the color as well, right? I'm going to leave it white so it's not tinted at all. Um, but the next thing that we're, you know, we're definitely going to want things to be able to collide with this object, right? That's something that, um, you know, is basically every object you make in Unity um, that you want to be able to interact with. We need to have a collision detection on it. So if I click on Add Component, now before, right, we used the physics mod, the physics menu here to go through and add a box collider, capsule collider, etc. These are all meant for 3D use. And so what we actually want to do is we want to step back and we want to do physics 2D. And with this, you'll see there's some different things. There's a box collider 2D. There's a circle collider 2D. Note that they all say 2D after them. Um, and instead of a sphere, it's a circle. And then you know a box is still a box. Um, and you'll note there's some other interesting physics objects in here. Um, including edge colliders and fixed joints and this area effector and constant force. And yeah, there's some really exciting things that you can uh, you can work with here that don't exist um, without some work in 3D space. So I'm going to click on the box collider 2D. Um, if I click on this edit handles, you'll see, and it's hard to see against this white background, but there's a green outline around this, right? And it's basically just a box. And um, right, I can edit this 
um, in different ways to make it a little bit smaller or larger, right? I can always do offset and I can set it numerically here as well. Note that um, I also have is trigger, um, you know, is it used by an effect or used by a composite? Those are new things that we'll talk about later in this process. Um, and is there some edge radius? Um, right now, I'm not going to worry about that and I'm not going to make any edits to this. Okay, so let's see how physics work by creating another um, unit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this checkerboard asset, right, which I've already changed to this sprite 2D and UI. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up into the scene, and you'll see that it is absolutely enormous. <laughs> and so I'm going to zoom out some and then rescale this. Uh, this. This tile, and if I hold down shift, it will scale uniformly, just like a, any sort of 2D drawing program. Um, but this, uh, this tile is used uh, when you're working on textures in 3D space um, because it allows you to, to very easily check and see if there are any um, issues with like warping on your UVs. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this up a little bit higher and I'm gonna go ahead and add a 2D box collider on here, right? So box collider 2D, leave everything the same. But then the other thing I need to do is if I want physics to be active in here, if I want this to drop with gravity towards the bottom of the screen, I'm going to need to add a rigid body component. And so if I click on Add Component and go to Physics 2D, one of the options in here is Rigid Body 2D. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it says Simulated. I'm leaving everything else alone, right? Gravity scale is 1. There's a few differences in how gravity works in 2D, but um, you know, for all intent for right now, we're just going to leave the defaults. And if I go ahead and hit play, um, this should fall until it collides with this object, right? And there we go. It fell, it hit the banana, um, and now we're, we're happy. So let's look at some of the things we can change um, with this banana. So if I select the banana, right, a lot of times you, if you're making like a platformer, you don't want your character to be running on the very top surface of the platform. You actually want to have some illusion of like some depth or something like that. Uh, and so um, oftentimes you can go ahead and just select edit your collider. So I've, I'm editing this collider. And if I pull this down a bit and then run this again, um, right, this box is going to fall until it hits the edge of the collider, right, which is now different than the edge of the object. So Right, so this falls down there. Now it doesn't make any sense in this case, but you can imagine if you had, you know, like if this tile had, you know, sort of a false sense of perspective, um, you know, so that the front edge of the platform was here and it kind of went back to the top, then you'd want your character to be running in this place. All right, so we've got physics working in 2D. Now, one of the things about physics in 2D is it's really, right, only set up to function um, in a, right, in an environment where the Y direction, right, because in this case, X is a horizontal position, Y is a vertical position. If I click on the Move tool and go back to my Scene window, you can see I have my two axes here. So I have green, which is Y, and red, which is X. And Z, right, does it more or less doesn't get used. That's not entirely true. You could throw put things in the Z axis if you wanted to. Um, but so one of the issues with this, right, I can actually lift this up and it should drop again. Yep. But it's only going to drop with Y in the up direction or Y in the down direction. The other way you can you can set your physics up a little bit differently, and I want to go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm going to stop this. And if you go to File, or sorry, excuse me, you go to Edit, you go down to Project Settings, and you go down to Physics or Physics 2D over here. Physics is for the 3D physics engine. And you'll see this is where you set gravity and the direction of gravity, right? So in our case, gravity is negative 9.81, and that would be, you know, units per second and unity, but right, it's based on meters per second. Um, is the acceleration, right, due to gravity in the y direction. 
Now note that we could change this so acceleration happens in the z direction or acceleration happens in the x direction. Um, if I go to Physics 2D, I only have the options of using um, you know, the x or the y direction. So if I was, say, doing a top-down, um, if I was doing a top-down um, uh, 2D game and I wanted gravity be, to be a part of that, that would be tricky with this orientation. So there's a couple ways I could do it. Um, just to throw this out there so you all can think about this, but one of the ways that I could do this is I could either, um, using the project settings, I could either leave everything oriented this way, and instead of using the 2D physics objects, which is going to limit me with some of the force, like the constant force things and some other of the, the, those features, but I could just set the gravity to be in the Z direction right, so that everything is falling, you know, essentially away from the camera um, in its current orientation. The other option I would have would be to just reorient my camera so that rather than, so that rather than um, up being Y and X, right, I could rotate my whole, I could adjust my camera so that um, what I'm looking at is the, I'm doing orthographic, um, but I'm actually right looking down on the game map from above in the y direction, and x z is the 2D plane. So that's another option, and then I could use the 2D physics engine um, potentially in that way if I wanted things to be able to jump and be and have physics physics apply. Typically, with 2D games, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. Um, but those are things to think about. Something else I haven't mentioned yet is. This white outline here is the outside edges of the camera, right? So even if I don't have the camera selected, this shows me the frame of where things are happening in camera at any given moment in my, in my game. All right, so um, let's go ahead and look at adding motion to this um, and adding control to this using... Um, using a flow graph. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and, oh, something to note, if you um, are doing this in a new project, and this is something I've already done, you may note that you don't have the option of, if you go to create a component an object, let's say I select this and I'm, I want to be able to control this. So I'm going to click on add component and bolt might not be here. Right, and that's because even though we installed it for a previous project, we need to install it for this project, right? So if that's the case, just go to Window, go to Package Manager, um, and I believe it's in the Unity registry. Let's see here. Nope, I'm gonna say, um, can't remember it's My Assets, there we go. That's where I have it downloaded. It's something, My Assets is what you download from the download, um, from the Unity store. So, right, I have Bolt here, and I would just click Import, Import the stuff, and then um, you could refer back to that very first tutorial with Bolt where I show you how to do the install. But mainly, right, you import it, and then you go up to Tools at the top, and you go down to Install Bolt. Um, and then once you do that, it's going to ask you to import a bunch more assets. You do that, and then you go through and you choose what type you want to do. Um, right, you go to Bolt and you use the setup wizard um, and you choose which right orientation you want. Like, do you want programmer language or, you know, <laughs> non-programmer language? Um, and those steps are pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so let's pretend that you've done that and now we have um, the ability to create a graph. So I'm going to select my player, which in this case um, you know, why don't we just go ahead and create a new asset? I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to import new asset and I'm going to pop back to, let's see here, I'm just going to type in Bob, see if I can find Bob Ross in here again. It's Bob underscore Ross. Let's see if I can find him. There he is. So you know, I actually have them already in my assets folder. Um, but if not, why don't you go ahead and find that? I'm going to click on this again, and I've got this Bob Ross one. 
I'm going to rename this. Um, I'm just going to call, oh, for some reason that did not let me rename it. There we go. I'm just going to call it Bobby. And so Bobby's a little different from the other Bob, but if I select this, he's going to pop up huge. And then, right, he's a 2D asset that I brought in, and I want him to be a sprite. So I'm going to go ahead and set my texture type to um, sprite, 2D, and UI. And as soon as I have done that, I want to make sure I hit apply or else nothing's going to happen and I won't be able to figure out why. And now that Bobby's there, I can just drag Bobby into the scene. And there he is. And now we have Bob Ross. And so everything in the world is fine and wonderful. All right, so let's go ahead and scale Bob Ross down and we'll use the Rect tool to do that because right, it focuses just on two dimensions. And we'll hold down Shift so Bob doesn't get you know out of whack. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and add a collider because, right, there's no collider on this whatsoever. So I need to go to Physics 2D. I'm going to do a box collider because he is rectangular. And at least for the time being, I'm not too worried about the corners of this catching on things. Um, and then we could go ahead and add a rigid body component to this. So I'm going to go to Physics 2D again. I'm going to go down to Rigid Body 2D. And <clears throat> now that I've done that, um, Bob is also now ready for a flow graph. Now you'll notice I already have a couple flow machines on here. I'm actually using the second one, which is empty, but if you don't have a flow machine on here, just go ahead and go to add component, bolt, flow machine. And you could create a macro for this. Um, it might be wise to have a macro at this point because, um, because we are going to, you might want to reuse this. <laughs> Um, this code. So I'm going to go ahead and click new and I'm going to just call it 2D character motion. Um, and if there's a scripts folder, there is. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Okay. Now, right now I've got update and I've got my start event. I'm not going to need the start event at all, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, but what I am going to need is I need a way to move this. Now, remember from previous character motion stuff, within 3D mode, right, when you're using a rigid body, you do not um, apply the, you do not make any changes to the transform um, of the object to the position, rotation, or scale. You apply changes to the rigid body, and you do that by using either add force or um, by setting the velocity. And so we're going to go ahead and um, do this through the, the set velocity option. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is, right, we're going to need to say, okay, from update, we're going to want to be updating our motion. And in order to do that, we need to get our input and our horizontal axis, which we've done before. So we can just go ahead and click and drag and type um, input. Oops, if I can spell it right, input dot get axis. And if I just say get A, it should bring that up as my first option. There it is. So the axis name is going to be capital H horizontal. Um, and we're not going to need the y axis at all, right? When three in uh, the vertical axis, because in 3D space, we need to be able to move in the x, z plane and then be able to jump in the third dimension. Whereas in 2D, right, we're only moving, in this case, this will be like a side scroller or whatever. So um, we're only going to be moving left and right, right? And then we can jump to go up, but that's going to be a different type of input than the input get axis. Um, and we'll talk about top down motion in a little bit. So I got my input get axis. Um, I'm going to get this. And then what I need to do from here is I want to set the velocity of the rigid body. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to go straight over and do this, but I'm going to go ahead and say, um, rigid body, but it's going to be rigid body 2D. And then there's a whole bunch of options here. There's add force and everything else. Um, so I could either do that motion mode, or I could say just rigid body 2D dot velocity and set. Okay. Right. And so you'll note that I have a two dimensional array or a two dimension uh, vector two here, which is right because I'm only have motion really in two directions. I can't have motion in the z-axis unless I change this unit. And so what I need to do is I need to set this 
um, into one of these two options. So I'm going to need to create another unit. So I'm just going to say new vector two because we're using vector twos and then x, y. And so I can take this horizontal motion, I can run it into the x. And again, we're, and then I can feed this out in the vector two out to the vector two input here. And then I just need to adjust my flow so it actually connects right between here. So this is the most basic and we're probably gonna move really slowly. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and play this and see if we move at all. Because all we're sending out, right, is a negative one, a positive one, or a zero. And so if I press D, um, I'm not even moving anywhere. I'm getting so little motion. In fact, for some reason, nothing's happening at all. And that is probably because I neglected to turn this flow machine on. <laughs> and so now, hey, there we go. I've got side motion, right? So I can move back and forth. I'm moving really, really slow because I haven't set a speed yet, right? And you'll note that I do slide a little bit as well. And we can, we'll talk about friction so you don't just keep sliding off the edge of platforms or things. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And uh, now what I need to do is I need to make it so I have a little bit more freedom in terms of how quickly I move. And so I'm going to go ahead and I could either create a graph variable. Um, it might be better to have this be an object variable because then it'll show up out here. And you'll see that um, I was doing some other stuff. And so I'm going to get rid of some of these because I don't, I'm going to leave jump force. We'll talk about that in a second. But let's go ahead and just type in speed. So if I hit speed and I hit plus, and then uh, do I want this to be a vector three? No, I want this to be a float, and I want this value to be, let's just say, let's set it at 10 for the time being. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. And again, most simply, I could just go ahead and um, click on this, click again, and it looks like I have every option in the world. So I'm just going to say, um, multiply because I'm going to want to multiply 10 by whatever value this, this is coming out of horizontal, right? So maybe because this automatically attaches to the top one, I'll just bring this multiply up and wish that I hadn't because I just pulled my screen everywhere. Okay. So, right. So I've got this multiply and we need to fit this into this chain of events. So I'm going to multiply whatever this is, that negative one, zero, whatever by 10. And then I'm going to send the output of that into my vector two. And let's see what happens here. Okay. So I should, oh, right. So something I forgot to do that I did while this was playing was to turn this on. So I'm going to turn that back on again. I'm going to click in here. Now things are going. Um, for some reason, I am getting vertical speed, and you'll, if you look at my graph, you'll understand why, right? What did I do wrong? I, instead of connecting this into the X, I actually connected it to the Y, so now we sort of very slowly float or fly down more quickly, um, which is not really what we're going for, so let's go ahead and I can just break this um, real quick so we can test it, and then I'll stop it and fix it for real. Okay, so. Now, if I click in my game scene, you can see that, right, I'm moving a little bit faster. Now, there's going to be a few issues that come up here um, in a little bit, and we'll talk about that in a second. You'll note that one of those is that Bob is rotating all over the place, right? He can hit other rigid bodies. Now he's upside down. But yeah, there's some problems here with, you know, how Bob is moving. This isn't probably the type of motion we're all hoping for. Um, and so let's go ahead and talk about why that's happening and how we can fix that. It's actually a really simple fix. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to make sure that these changes stayed, but I want to turn my flow machine on so I don't keep forgetting to do that. Okay, so this is working um, somewhat well. Now, um, something that we might want to do um, is to use time delta time like we've used previously to make sure the steps are the right size and we don't have speed that kind of varies all over the place, right? Because right now, if there's some change in, in how much time it takes to render this frame versus the previous frame, 
I'm going to be speeding up or slowing down a little bit. And um, anybody who plays this and has something like that happen on their system is going to be really frustrated um, <laughs> by the performance. So let's go ahead and add a unit. We're going to add time dot, and if I just do time dot de, I'll get time dot delta time. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy this multiply unit um, because what we're going to do is we want to multiply the output of this by this, um, which also means right our speed's going to have to be faster. Um, but it also gives us more fine-tuned control with you know larger numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and say time delta time. I'm going to bring this down to be multiplied here. So these two things are multiplied together, right? Because time delta time is going to be a really small value, um, but it uh, makes sure that we are keeping our speed uniform throughout the whole experience. So then once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and find my speed variable. I'm going to go to the object variables here. I'm going to go down to speed, and I'll probably just make this 100 to start with, and we'll see how fast I go. So let's do this fix. Let's make sure it works. And then we will add one more. Now, right, when you're working with Bolt or really with any um, coding whatsoever, um, you know, I have no idea why I have so much drag, which is kind of hilarious. But look, so I'm getting actually a pretty good speed here, left and right, and right again. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why. I'm going to have to check my rigid body. For some reason, my gravity seems to be really off, but that's okay. So, um, right, so here comes Bob pushing stuff around. You know, he's not really operating the way I would like him to, but he is moving back and forth at a decent speed. And if there's, you know, changes in how my system's working, he will be able to um, still move at a similar rate across the screen. Okay, so how do I get him to stop from rotating, right? Because I don't want him to, <laughs> there he goes, slowly, slowly sliding down the screen. I'm still not 100% sure what's going on with that, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And, um, okay, so I've got my speed right, but what I need to do is I don't want him to be rotating, right? And this is because, right, he is a rigid body object, right? He's, you know, he has mass and he's tipping up on a corner and then falling over. And so I want to fix that. I want to make that not happen. And so one of the ways I can do that is there's this option here in the rigid body tag on Bob call it, that says constraints. If I flip that down, you'll see that I can choose to freeze my position in the X or Y dimension, right? So I could freeze this in the Y so I can't go up and down. I can just go left and right. Um, or the other option is I can freeze rotation in the Z. If I do that and then go ahead and play this again, then Bob should not tip over when he comes to the edge and his center of mass goes over that edge. Now, again, I'm not sure why I'm getting such, you know, stuff, but if I come over here and I'm on the edge of this object, you'll see that I can get all the way out and then I fall off, right? So this is, and I, no matter what I'm doing, I'm not tipping over. This is more like the, uh, the what we want to have happen for our characters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Okay, so we have Bob moving. However, Bob is uh, not um, falling. He's falling like a leaf, right? Like Bob is very gently descending towards the ground. He is not. Um, he is not falling at negative nine point eight one units per second. And so the question is why. If we look at our graph, the answer is not going to be obvious right away, most likely. But the problem is here where we create this new vector and we send it into our velocity. Because what we're doing is we're setting our velocity, right? We're not, we're, we're taking, whatever, we don't care what the previous velocity was. We're just totally overriding it with this new velocity, right? And so what's happening is that because the rigid body is being impacted by physics and gravity, right? The gravity engine is saying, okay, our velocity should in the y direction should be negative 9.81. And so it is for a little bit. And then our 
our bolt graph, our graph says, oh no, y, the velocity in the y direction should be zero. And so then it isn't. So then it's zero for a little bit. And then it's negative 9.81 for a little bit. Then it's zero for a little bit. Then it's negative 9.81, right? So it's, it's going back and forth really quickly between those things, which is what really, what we really want to do is we want to make sure that we are not overriding our velocity, right? So we actually need to grab the velocity before we go and reset it because we want that to be the same, right? We want to be that to be a continuous thing. So that means that later when we go and we um, create part of the graph that will allow us to jump, um, we can, right, we're not overriding that jump that we just did either. Okay. And actually, we may just actually overwrite the Y for the jump and then let it, when it's not jumping, let it, let it be free. But to do this, what we're going to do is we need to right click, we need to say add unit, and we need to say, um, I think if I just type in the velocity, velocity, yeah, it's going to pull this up. And so I want to get, I want on my rigid body 2D, I want to get the velocity. Right, and so I want to get the velocity, and in particular, what I want is the y value out of that. So if I just drop down here and I just say get as my option there, it's going to go down. I can come down to vector two dot y get. I can grab that, pull this over, and then I can just connect this to the y value for this new vector two. So right, so whatever my previous velocity was. Um, whenever I'm doing horizontal motion, it's just rather than overriding it with a zero, it's just going to um, essentially transmit whatever it previously was into the new body because my left and right motion should not be controlling my um, vertical motion in any way. So let's go ahead and play this and see if Bob falls a little bit faster than he used to. Okay, so yeah, Bob is falling at the right rate. Hooray, right? So we've got side to side motion and we've got Bob falling down the hill. Now, something I'm going to do right now, because I want to show you some faults with the collider that we're using, is we're going to copy this element and we're going to make a ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to select this square. I'm going to hit, you know, I'm going to copy and paste it. And then I'm going to drag this over and I'm going to use my rotate tool. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so it's at an angle. And I'll make it reasonably somewhat steep. Um, you know, if I make it too steep, I'm not going to be able to climb up it at all. And then I'm going to use my uh, rect tool. I'm just going to drag this up so that they're connected like this. All right. So then I'm going to come up this ramp. And so let's go ahead and see how this goes in its current state. Okay. So I've got Bob here and I'm going to try and go up this ramp. Now, you'll see that I'm actually going up that ramp reasonably smooth, smoother than I expected. Um, but that oftentimes, depending on what this, um, what this shape looks like, I can have some, I can get really rough, bumpy motion um, up this ramp. I was hoping it would be a little bit bumpier than it is, and, but, you know, it's nice and smooth. Um, so what we can do is we can stop this and... Um, because we don't have to worry about Bob tipping it over anymore because our rigid body um, is set to have uh, no chain, right, to have no rotation in the Z, we can go ahead and use a capsule collider instead. So let's go ahead and say physics 2D, capsule collider 2D. Um, I am on the wrong object. We do not want that on that cube. Let's select Bob. There we go. And we're going to go down to add component and go to Physics 2D, um, Capsule Collider 2D, and then uh, we should be able to pull this up through our thing. There it is, it's right below the rigid body. I am going to turn this box collider off. Um, I might actually just go ahead and remove it, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this um, up above. And you'll note there's certain places where, for whatever reason, I can't get this blue line to show up, but other places I can. So I'm going to pull it up there. If for some reason you're having a really aggravating time moving it around, um, if you click on the three little dots here, you can always say move up or move down. Okay, so, um, so now if I open this up and select this, right, I've got this like rounded thing. Um, you'll note that I might want to make my, oops, <laughs> 
not what I wanted to do. I might want to make my collider bigger because, right, I'm going to cut into the other um, object that I'm colliding with a little bit. Uh, but we're going to just go ahead and see what that what this looks like, right? So typically this is going to give us much smoother motion, especially if it's like a staircase or something like that that we're going up. We're not going to be jarring um, by hitting against each and every thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can get some jump functionality working, right? Right now we've got this ramp, um, and there's another, well, we're going to leave the ramp there because I want to show you some other th fun things we can do with the 2D physics engine. Okay, so we've got our horizontal motion set up, so much so that we should probably go ahead and hold down command or control and click and drag to create a, make this a group, right? And I'm gonna call this um, uh, horizontal motion. Okay, so we've got our horizontal motion down. So now we need to say, okay, well, what happens <coughs> when we jump. How are we going to determine that? And, um, you know, what what are the implications for that, right? So first, we're going to want to be able to get keyboard input or, um, you know, get button input, whatever it is. And so if you remember from a long time ago, if we go down to our um, to our project settings, and in this, we go to the player tab, um, sorry, not the player tab, the input manager. We flip open our axes, um, right? We've got all sorts of options in here, but we so predominantly we have these things that are named, right? Horizontal and vertical, which we've used. The one we don't have right now is, we're not using is jump, but you'll note that the positive button is the space bar by default. And so this is what we're going to want to use. Um, rather, than, um, rather than use the other, you know, get keyboard input or whatever, this is going to be something where if we were to, you know, somebody was to plug in a gamepad, right, they'd be able to use the jump button on the gamepad um, or the space bar or whatever they wanted to use in order to jump. So we're going to go ahead and use this rather than setting it to a particular key. So how do I do that? So first I'm going to say input dot get. And um, now this is a button, I believe, is what we're going to do. And so we're going to say input get button down button name. All right. And so our button name is going to be jump. And what this does is it sends out, it gives us a true or a false value, right? So, and you probably can't read that on you on whatever, but that's all right. So, right, so we need to be able to jump, right? So, you know, input get button down jump is what we want to do. It's going to send out a true or false value. And so then we need to take some action based on whether that's true or false. And so the next object we're going to want to create here is a branch function. So I'm going to say branch and I'm going to go ahead and connect jump or connect the true or false value coming out of that. And now I have these two options. Now, one of them, the question is, where do we want to connect this to the remainder of our, to the rest of our graph, right? Because in the end, we want to set this velocity and I might actually just pull this out here, but we'll see. Um, but what would be great is all I want to be doing is setting the y, the velocity in the y direction. And so I want to be able to do one set of steps if it's true and one set of steps if it's false. And so let's go ahead and look at how to do that. So I've increased the size of my uh, of the graph by double clicking so you could all see this better. And so, you know, so the question is, what do I want to do if this is true? If it's true, I want to do what we've done previously, which is essentially add 10 units of force to the velocity. I want to make the velocity in the y direction temporarily 10, right? I want to just blast all the way up there. 
And if it's false, I don't want to do anything, right? So the not doing anything is really what's happening here, right? Where the whatever our velocity in the y direction was, um, it's being set back to that here. Whereas in this case, I want to be able to override that. I'm, I'm going to want the x and y, you know, the x stuff to still be happening, but I want to be able to reset this value. So let's go ahead and to start with, I can even just copy this new vector two and bring this down here because this is a, and say, okay, true, I want to come here and I just want y to be 10. And then I want to run this into here. Oh, but you'll see that I can't have two of these inputs going in from two different sources. So I'm going to need to figure out how to do this in a different way. So let's go ahead and figure that out. So if I can't set it here, I need to figure out how to put these together in a way that will work. And so, you know, I'd, rather than have two of these units, maybe what I can do is I can have um, one branch that one of these branches connect here and to here, and then maybe I have a second branch that does something slightly different. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one for the time being, because I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to paste them. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this out here as well. I'm going to disconnect the flow. So, right, I'm going to go from update to get this check for the access. Then I'm going to immediately check to see if I'm jumping. And if I have decided to jump, then I'm going to do this set of actions down here. But let's start with the false. If I'm not jumping, we want this to work. Right? So we want to just still be able to have whatever our previous one was set and go through there. Now, if I do jump, what I want to do is I still want this value. I still want to be able to have the X value, right? Stay the same, but I'm going to want to set the Y value to 10 temporarily. So I'm going to go ahead and then say, okay, well, let's connect this to true, connect this down here, and let's see how this works. And then we'll clean things up a little bit if it's functional, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here. Now I have not set a ground check, so there's no way to know if Bob's on the ground or not, he's going to jump. And it looks like I have a problem here where something is being set. Oh, but I do have horizontal, oh, I'm not getting any horizontal motion. So something, something is wrong with my graph. You will note that, right, this is false, but I'm still not getting any motion here. And I don't know what happened. I must have clicked on something, but you can see that I'm actually not getting a connection here, which is also why this was falling so slowly. So let's try this again. Okay, so now I can slide back and forth. Hey, look at that. And then if I hit the space bar, ah, there we go. Now I can get an actual jump, right? And so the reason I wasn't moving any is because um, I wasn't actually <laughs> changing my velocity, right? So now Bob can jump and I currently just have this hard coded for a value of 10. So let's go ahead and stop this. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And so instead of having this be 10 here, I know that I have this jump force variable I created. If you haven't, don't have that, go ahead and type in jump force, make it a float, set the value to 10. And we can just drag this down here and apply it. Okay, so now I could adjust my strength, right? If I want him to have a pretty weak jump, I could set that value to five. Um, if I wanted him to be able to fly to the moon, I could set it to a thousand. Uh, but <laughs> we don't want Bob to be able to fly that far um, at this point in the process. But right, so five seems like a, you know, maybe a more modest jump. Um, now there's maybe a little bit of a problem here. Let's see. Oh, there goes Bob. I can see him. Come on. 
scoot that thing off of there. All right. All right, so now Bob's sitting on the banana. He's really happy. Okay. So now there's something you may have noticed already, right? The camera is not moving with my player, right? He's going off the screen. He's dropping off the bottom, off the sides, and we need to fix that. So how are we going to make that um, make that change? But first, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. 